Today we're going to quickly talk about 20 plus reasons why the stock market inevitably is going to crash or something far, far worse. Let's get to it. I have to say before we start, I am not a financial advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. It appears that the current stock market trend defies all logic. It's as if any bad news, be it pandemic, riots, trade wars, is just fuel for the raging inferno that is the current stock market rally. In today's video, we discuss 20 reasons why this is doomed to fail. Before we go further, it's important to note the disconnect between what's been termed the real economy and the stock market. Although these two things historically are tethered together, it appears that this tether has grown far more elastic over the last three months. But eventually, it has to snap back to reality. For the people on Main Street who have lost their jobs or who've had their incomes drastically reduced, the shit has already hit the fan. But there's a lot more misery on the horizon, namely for the middle class. One of the first harbingers of an economic collapse is economic inequality. This will become far more pronounced throughout this COVID outbreak, as the most up-to-date data suggests that the billionaires are getting much richer while the poor continue to get poor. This makes sense when the majority of jobs lost are the jobs held by the working class. Meanwhile, the stock market continues to rally with the help of quantitative easing, which is essentially borrowing from everyone's future to fund the fantasies of the present. Even the most staunch conservatives from Milton Friedman to Jordan Peterson would agree that if there is too much inequality within a society, it will destabilize. And that instability may well contribute to its downfall. It's estimated that around 43 million people are unemployed and that the true unemployment rate is around 25%, which is on par with the worst levels of the Great Depression. The only difference is this happened over a couple months, whereas that happened over a few years. It's expected that 42% of these jobs probably won't come back. That means that by the time everyone is back to work and all the stimulus money has been spent and the deficit is already at $10 trillion, our unemployment will still be at the Great Recession levels that followed 2008. It's projected that up to 30% of small businesses may fail. And it should be known that 99 out of 100 businesses are small businesses. Many cannot pay their rent, which is causing problems with the commercial real estate market. It's likely going to see property values decline significantly. This will contribute to a large part of those massive layoffs, and this is going to overall reduce consumer spending. Even after the lockdowns are lifted, it's expected that in order for businesses to be compliant, they're likely going to see a drastic reduction in sales. There will be a lingering anxiety long after the lockdowns are lifted of people who are just too paranoid to want to go out and spend money in these places. Banks are not lending as much money as they were before. It's harder to get a credit card, you need a higher credit score, it's going to be harder to get a mortgage, and you're going to have to have a larger down payment. This is going to prohibit a lot of people from entering the housing market. To make matters worse, almost everybody is in some sort of debt. Consumer debt was at all-time highs before this happened earlier in the year. People have become accustomed to living well beyond their means, and delinquency rates are on the rise. And as the Federal Reserve has demonstrated, as above, so below. There is so much debt in the system that the only thing holding it all together is the international community's faith in the US dollar. Should that ever falter, look out. Most researchers predict that there will be a second wave or resurgences of COVID-19 throughout the years to come. There are many countries around the world where the virus is only now taking root. And as the economy reopens and the riots and protests ensue, we are likely to see a significant uptick in the coming weeks. And depending on how dramatic it is, this in itself could be what triggers the crash. Mortgage defaults and delinquencies are expected to triple in spite of the forbearance policies that are in place. Eventually, the stimulus is going to have to end. The stimulus is going to end long before employment levels get back to normal. In fact, it's going to end long before employment levels even get back to the levels that they were at at the Great Recession. For this reason, the socioeconomic instability that we're seeing now will definitely continue. Rioting and civil unrest are a very real threat. Political divisiveness not only within the United States, but in countries around the world who are now trying to find solutions to these economic problems. This discourse is going to intensify through the US elections this fall. Throughout this process, the markets are going to be hypersensitive to polling data, 
and any political incidents between the two parties that ensue. All of this while the threat of Trump evoking the Insurrection Act, aka basically martial law, looms over people's heads. Should this be implemented, it may just be the thing that bursts the bubble. Many think that right now the market is already priced to perfection. Normally, stock valuations are based on projections of the next quarter, possibly even the next six months, maybe in some cases the next year. Current stock valuations are based on best case scenarios out to 2022. The only way this market sustains this price if every single thing goes perfectly for the next two years but I'm not holding my breath. There's a ratio called the Q ratio. This was created by a Nobel laureate named James Tobin. In terms of valuation indicators, this one has proven to be highly reliable. And what it demonstrates is that stocks are as overvalued right now as they were right before the dot-com bubble. One of the biggest bubbles in history. Gross domestic product is the total value of goods and services produced or provided by a country in any given year. The GDP in the United States is expected to fall 53% in quarter two. And any country in the world who's imposed a similar style of lockdown is also going to suffer the same blow on their GDP. Currently, the U.S. Treasury is expecting a $3.8 trillion deficit. Canada is currently running around a $300 billion deficit. And while that doesn't seem as much, remember, we are 10 times smaller. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is higher than it's ever been before. There's talks that this will go up to $10 trillion this year alone. They've stated that there is no limit for the quote-unquote support that they can offer. I believe that this has given investors a false sense of security in terms of the Federal Reserve's ability to backstop the economy, as they say. This may work for the next few months, possibly even the rest of the year. But because the Fed is lending money haphazardly to anybody who's asking pretty much, it's likely that there's going to be a lot of bankruptcies and defaults, and a lot of this money is not going to be able to be paid back ever. Thus, we can expect that the currency is going to be debased. Your dollars are going to be worth less. All of this while government expenditures are on the rise. Policing the riots and providing additional health care are going to make the deficit even worse. This becomes even more problematic considering that there's more government expenditures but less taxes because nobody's been working. Remember that the gross domestic product was down by 53%. You can bet that the tax revenue of the governments of the world is going to be significantly down this year. What this means is that in the future there's going to be higher taxes and lower quality government services. Poorer schools, poorer roads, the quality of education, roadways, and unfortunately, policing is probably not going to get better. Another reason why the market is probably destined to crash and is just riding on FOMO and the Fed's backstop right now is because there is a reduction in stock buybacks. Some of the pre-COVID growth was fueled by companies buying back some of their own shares, thus reducing the amount of outstanding shares on the market and making their stock more enticing to potential investors, thus raising the value of the stock. Now that the money to do so has dried up, this is no longer a card that can be played. We also have many wealthy investors who've been sitting on the sidelines, Warren Buffett being among the most prominent. Right now, we are seeing a disproportional amount of professional investors who are sitting out of the market waiting on the sidelines. And we're also seeing a disproportionately high amount of retail investors. That's the average Joe middle class investor who has nothing better to do because he's in quarantine, but stay home and trade stocks all day. A great example of this is Hertz. Billionaire investor Carl Lacan, he was one of Hertz's biggest shareholder. While this guy was dumping all of his shares of Hertz, all the retail investors were going bananas buying into the stock as the company was going bankrupt. In the meantime, the US federal government, with this funny money, has been purchasing corporate bond ETFs. Some of these actually hold Hertz bonds. So the billionaires are essentially dumping the junk stocks on the retail investor, who I'm presuming is banking on the government to save these companies from bankruptcy. The problem is a lot of these companies just probably won't have a future when you think of things like Uber and self-driving cars. Another thing to look at is something called the forward price earnings ratio, correlated with the US misery index. As we can see here right now, there is a huge disconnect between these two things. You can clearly see that the current valuation of the stock market is well out of sync with the misery North Americans are facing. 
This is in part because of the unprecedented quantitative easing by the Federal Reserve and the rabid FOMO of retail investors everywhere, which is baseless and has no foundation in reality. This is all very reminiscent of the 1929 FOMO bubble. People were so overconfident in the market at the time, even though the fundamentals of the businesses they were investing in did not support this optimism. Many of the stocks were so wildly overpriced as they are now that a collapse was inevitable. People were even going to the extent of taking out loans in order to buy into the stock market because the idea was that the stock market would inevitably just go up, no matter what was happening in reality. This led to an acid bubble which popped on Black Thursday of October 24th, 1929. The same thing is essentially happening now, only the government is borrowing money from the Federal Reserve. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people were trading on credit right now because of this phony bull market rally. This is why many people think that this isn't a bull market, that this is just what's called a bear market rally. This typically happens after an initial market crash, where it appears as though the market has retraced and we're now seeing new upward trends, but that this is going to be followed by a long-winded, painful decline, which will better reflect the so-called real economy. And I say so-called because I believe the idea that these things are as decoupled as some people are saying they are is false and history will prove that. As the saying goes, in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. It depends on bids. It depends on subjective reality. But in the long term, it's a weighing machine. Objective reality has the final say. A survey was done showing that up to 51% of the chief financial officers of major corporations around the world expect that the Dow Jones is going to go back below 19,000 before it's able to reach a new stock market high. Only 22% expect that the Dow is going to hit a record high before a major decline. And if you take American CFOs out of that equation, CFOs from Europe, the Middle East, and Africa think that there's a 70% chance that we are going to see another market crash. Now, there's a lot of variables that are going to come into play that determine how this plays out. If the riots continue and get worse, if the job loss numbers continue, if lockdown is attempted again, if the numbers continue to go up, it's going to depend largely on the China trade war, which is also another factor which we could go into great depth about as yet another reason why this market should not be where it is right now. In addition to that, we have all of the other everyday struggles that the world ever had. So for all these reasons, it's inevitable that the market is going to either crash or what's going to happen is that the currency is going to become so debased and inflated that the stock market will keep going up but your money that's contained within that stock market is going to be worth less and less and less. Let me know what your predictions are in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.